Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me stand on existing protocols by recognizing the high table. But of course, uh, recognizing uh, excellencies, honorable ministers, ambassadors, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me um, to present uh, Gambia's experience with regards to um, maternal mortality. So I have a problem with this. Okay, I hope it's not moving. Maybe I need some technical assistance here. Okay. All right, so uh, how many people know where Gambia is? How many? Can I see hands up? Very few. Ah, okay. So um, first we will give you our location, but of course um, we'll go into details of giving you uh, our maternal mortality situation as a country, uh, the trends, the causes, the distribution, some of the contributing factors to this maternal mortality we are, we are encountering, the challenges, the gaps in our health service delivery, and finally we'll give you some conclusions, strategies of course, conclusions and recommendations. Now, that is Gambia, so Gambia is a tiny country right there within Senegal, so for those of you who don't know Gambia, if you know Senegal, we are a tiny fraction. And uh, that is right there. So our capital is Banjul. Now, we, the country is neatly divided by the river Gambia, and that's where the country derived its name. And we have almost about five administrative regions. So they are all named after rivers because they call them you can see, apart from the western region, which is around the coast, all the rest are north bank, east region. And most of them are rivers. You see central river, upper river, etc., and lower river. Mm, so it's, move, it's not moving fast. Okay, so I will not uh, bother to give you definitions. I think Stella gave you a very brilliant one, so I will skip that one. But this is our health system, uh, which is not very different from many of your countries. It's a three-tier health system. We have a tertiary level, we have the secondary and the primary health care level. And you can see the populations we do serve at various levels. Right, so in essence, at the tertiary level, we have um, five general hospitals, one teaching hospital, and one eye health specialist hospital. We have 49 minor health facilities, six, 49 minor and six major health centers, and we have almost about 634 primary health care villages all across with community clinics and reproductive outreach clinics. So, so what is the mortality situation? Um, by our demographic, demographic data of 2013, 36% of all deaths you know, occur among women from age 15 to 49. The percentage of female deaths that are maternal varies from age and ranges from 7% of all deaths among women age 40 to 44 to 50% of deaths among women 25 to 29. So this very much corroborates with what Stella was saying as a developing country. So mortalities usually occur within the younger age cohort. 
But our maternal and mortality ratio stands at 433, which is absolutely very high. Now, if you look at uh, the trend, from 1990, we had registered 1050, which we reduced to 730 by 2001. And in 2013, it has reduced to 433. Now, these are uh, routine statistics of all the regions that I've shown you earlier. And they do report about maternal deaths by region. So you can see they vary a lot. Now, the Gambia subscribed to 75% of reduction of maternal mortality by 2015. However, we have not attained the MDG targets. Of course, for under five and infant, we have achieved. Now, the maternal mortality situation in the country has been, the reduction has been very slow and remains among the top priorities for the country and the government after the 2015 SDGs. The majority of maternal deaths are a result of direct obstetric complications. This is not different from many of the situation in PBD countries, basically due to hemorrhage, 37%, hypertensive disorders, 11%, and of course, infection within our setting is also a concern, which is also 11%. The main contributing factors in, in, include inadequate access, to um, the CMOC and BMOC, which is the comprehensive emergency obstetric care, as well as the basics. Also, the lack of trained manpower, poor transportation and infrastructure, and also because of our position as a river, so you, mothers do have to make a lot of crisscrosses to access healthcare in different parts of the country. But more importantly, because of the growing poverty and other social conditions. Now, in 2012, we've analyzed the situation. So if you look at the percentages, 50%, this was, the previous one was an earlier data, but was, was more current. But if you look at it from 2012, we had 50% of um, our cases are as a result of um, hemorrhage, you can see 17% were due to eclampsia and almost about 1 or 2% for obstetric labor, but of course 14% relate to other causes. Sorry. So why do many of our women die? In fact, this model is too common, but it applies in our context very well. In the Gambia, there is this issue of delay in seeking care because of the tradition of the fact that it's a male-dominated society. Many of the married women, before they decide to go to the health facility, must have the permission of their spouses or their care caretakers. And this causes a lot of delays and as a result affects them. Lack of understanding of complications related to pregnancy is an issue, but also um, some people accept maternal death as faith, so, and also the low socioeconomic status of women. And other so, ah, so, well, I think I have to go through because uh, I don't think I can give you all the things I have but also the delay in receiving care, the delay in uh, also in supplies um, as well, the finances are an issue. In terms of uh, Gambia's situation, uh, we have attained high coverage when it comes to access. All these dots you are seeing are outreach or health facilities right across the country, and we have a very good coverage when it comes to immunization, uh, maternal and child health clinics right across. Of course, if you also look at the distribution, it follows the same pattern. But when it comes to emergency obstetric care, it's, it's very poor. So you can see that even cesarean sections are provided in only a few areas. 
simply because our trained manpower, basically the obstetricians and the gynecologists are sourced from other countries like the Republic of Cuba. We have only a few Gambian obstetricians and gynecologists. Now, this is just a comparison of our basics. I would not, uh, but the challenge is, as I said, there is a huge variability in terms of standards of care, you know, because those in the more, um, in cities, enjoy more better health care than in rural facilities. Pregnant women still die. Management of obstetric emergencies is a, is a nightmare. And access to, for emergency care in rural population is a problem. But of course, other health system components raised by previous speakers, such as finance, material resources, and program inputs, and also uh, coverage versus quality is an issue. But of course, there is resistance, there is political and also social conditions. The poor network I've mentioned, but also poor nutrition, because Gambian civil servants generally receive low remuneration. And this affects our cream, the nurses, the obstetricians, and the doctors as well. So they re they usually they move, and the low morale is a problem. And transportation, as I said, is also an issue. Sorry. Okay, let me move. This is, these are the IMNOC facilities. What are the strategies? The objective is to contribute to reduction of maternal newborn child through provision of quality services that is affordable, but as well as uh, available and accessible. This is very key to our policy. The strengthening of our major minor health centers for equity is an issue so that we can provide comprehensive as well as basic emergency of free care, improving the availability and quality of comprehensive care in all the major facilities as well as the primary level is an issue, but as well as expansion of emergency maternal newborn and child health initiative is an issue. In terms of transport, we've been able to provide, these are just pictorial, Madam Chair, <laughs> they just meant to give you that the Gambia has done a lot, even in terms of providing ambulances in all the major facilities, including rural areas. This was one of the launches by the, His Excellency, the former Vice President. And these are new fleets which we replace, and we have uh, collaboration with, uh, 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 with an NGO, which is Riders for Health, which are very e efficient, but also we deploy other means of transport, and we have a very good reach with the community and you can see these are referral cases. We've also introduced in the most remote areas what we call the Uhuru Ambulance. This is uh, an innovation based on the South, South Corporation from Zimbabwe. We've tried it on a pilot scale and it has done a lot in reducing mortality because at the primary level, when they refer cases from the villages to the health facilities, the road networks are so poor well, and sometimes they are not motorable. So these are some of the things, Madam Chair, I've finished. Dr. Sensei, I've given you more I've time. already done. So these are all fourth, second, third generation that we equip our facilities <laughs> and we had better access. And finally, finally, oh really? Okay, all right, so thank you. This, I will leave you with the concluding remark from uh, my honorable minister who is bent to reduce uh, that mob mobility and mortality. I'm so sorry, the issue of maternal mortality is there to our hearts, but the time is too short. So I thank you for listening.